Welcome back. All right, so some news of the day for all you fine people for your Thursday, January 12th, meaning tomorrow's Friday the 13th, so I might have some fun with that. Um, I am a big Friday the 13th fan. At any rate, we're going to start things off talking about the Canucks. Uh, Tanner Pearson, who's been out for a while, it was revealed today that he's had a second-hand surgery. He will be out for the remainder of the season. Not a huge surprise because I hadn't heard anything positive regarding a return for a while. Uh, it is one trade piece that has been talked about since before the season started, really. As soon as Rutherford took over, I saw some saying, well, he traded Pearson out of Pittsburgh, may trade Pearson out of Vancouver. Whether he wanted to or didn't, in the end, uh, him being on the shelf means it's not going to happen. So Pearson's out for the rest of the year. Uh, they do want to re-sign Kuzmenko. So Pierre Lebrun reporting that the preference is to re-sign Kuzmenko and they're going to try, but they also are aware of the 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 trade value that Kuzmenko would have on an entry-level contract for teams that are in contention right now. So they want to re-sign Kuzmenko. I think they'd like to re-sign Horvat as well, and apparently they keep circling back and, and trying to figure out how to make that work. But uh, we'll see who's still with the team at the deadline and, uh, and who isn't. Uh, for Carolina fans, of course, yesterday Freddie Anderson was activated off of IR. That was after the first uh, the first news video I did. I try not to do multiple news videos in a day. I find that it just they they really underperform if I do multiple. That's why I don't do like extra news videos later on unless something big happens. Uh, Anderson being off of IR uh, allows Kachetkov to to go back down to the AHL is my guess. Although of course right away we'll hear discussions of what he's worth. He is on an expiring contract. If Carolina believes that Kachetkov could be the guy for them come tri come playoff time, uh, they may move Anderson. But again, with the salary cap being as it is, you're going to have to get creative depending on which team you're trading him to. And I don't know that Carolina has any desire to trade Freddie Anderson. The obvious the obvious solution to the three goaltending problem would be to send Kachetkov down, even though Kachetkov has arguably been their best goaltender. I say arguably because over the last couple weeks, his numbers have definitely come down. And it's one thing that I've talked about in videos uh, where you'll get a goaltender who comes in, plays really well out of the gate, and then teams start to figure out ways to beat that goaltender. So uh, Anderson may very well be part of the battery along with Ronta for this team going right through the, the, the deadline and into the playoffs. We shall see. But him being off of IR uh, means that there's some decisions to be made if you're the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, Connor McDavid, just an absolutely ridiculous season he's having, but I think we're so spoiled with McDavid's scoring exploits, we don't pay as much attention to it as we otherwise probably should. Uh, 35 goals in 43 games. He's the fastest oiler to reach 35 goals since somebody named Gretzky did it in 86-87, so uh, he's not going to hit 50 and 50. I don't see him getting 15 goals in his next seven games. But over his next seven games, I could see him getting 10. I, I could I could see that. Um, I do think that for McDavid, like he's on pace for almost 70 goals. I mean, that could happen. I, I think he should be able to hit 60. And it shows that for Connor McDavid, the sky's really the limit when it comes to goals and points. It's a reason that I've said for the last few years, I believe he's the best player in the league. I know there's various stats that may argue against it, but for me, uh, McDavid's the best player in the league. Again, as I said a couple weeks ago, though, Mc... Crosby would still be the guy I would want in a Game 7. But that's that again, that's a whole different argument. Uh, waiver claims from yesterday. The New York Rangers have claimed Jake LeCision. Uh, LeCision's a player that I like. Uh, did not have uh, a lot going on for him in Vegas. Didn't have a single point this season. Uh, he is a bottom six forward. We'll see how it goes. And honestly, he comes by it honestly enough. Uh, the last decision that was in the NHL, also not really an offensive dynamo, more of a defensive defenseman type. And so we'll see if this decision ends up following that decision in terms of, of points production. Uh, I, I do hope that we see a little bit more from him offensively. Otherwise, what we see with bottom six guys who are decent enough but just don't have the offensive side of it, uh, they can often end up in the AHL or, or, or wherever, right? So we'll see. Uh, also, Florida came claimed Fitzgerald uh, from the Buffalo Sabres on waivers. So a bit of a surprise they both got claimed, but that's the risk. When you put a guy on waivers, you're risking that he will go and you get nothing back for him. So we'll see how things go for, for the players with new teams. Rangers and the Florida Panthers both playing tonight. 
Uh, looks like LeCision may very well be in the lineup. I haven't seen whether or not Fitzgerald will play for the Florida Panthers, but he's a blue liner, so I, I, my guess is he may end up in the lineup sooner rather than later. Uh, I'm wearing my Joe Sackick jersey because he has been appointed to the Hall of Fame Selection Committee with the retirement of Bob Clark. Uh, so the Selection Committee and the Hall of Fame and how that works, the NHL has no control over that. Um, this is one thing that I've I've seen before. Oh, well, the Hall of Fame, you know, it's just it's it's uh, because the NHL wants this or the NHL doesn't want that. The selection committee is not uh, a part of the National Hockey League. The Hall of Fame is not part of the National Hockey League. Uh, I think adding Sakic means that maybe for some of uh, the players who played during his era, who we feel like's been overlooked, looking at Alex McGillney as an example. Maybe Joe Sakic could step forward and say, you know what, um, McGillney belongs in the Hall of Fame. And then we go from there. Maybe he looks and says, you know what? Brenda Moore really belongs in the Hall of Fame. And so we'll see if things change. Because the selection committee does change as years go by. And we'll see if they circle back on some of the guys who've been overlooked previously. Right? Because that's always a topic of discussion. Who's been hosed over when it comes to uh, making it into the Hall of Fame. So again, it, it gives a different perspective with different guys stepping in. As other guys step out. So we'll see. Um, so Boston, and I, I'm using this as sort of a way to talk about uh, trade rumors which start to become crazy this time of year. So the idea that maybe Boston would be in on Horvat, and the discussion of, well, Boston has a lot of expiring contracts, so clearly they could afford to get Horvat. Now as a rental, they can afford to go get Horvat, sure, yes. But if the plan is to keep Horvat and, and to try to use that to keep Pasternak as well, which is what I was reading... So, in terms of UFAs, they have a lot. They have Pasternak, Zaka, Felino, Smith, Bergeron, Krejci, Clifton. All of them are unrestricted free agents this summer. Frederick and Swayman are RFAs. Now, for Swayman, I would say his contract probably ends up looking along the same lines as Kachetkov. Kachetkov's extension worth $2 million a year. I think if Swayman gets $2 million a year, I don't think there'll be much complaining about it. I'm not saying there won't be any, but I think there, there won't be as much. So, yeah, uh, Swayman, that's, uh, so that's $2 million. Now they have $26.5 million in projected cap space for next year. So let's just say Horvat wants $8.5 million and Pasternak wants $10. $18.5 million, $20.5 you'd be left with $6 million left, and you'd have Bergeron, Zaka, Felino, Smith, Krejci, Clifton, and potentially, I guess, Frederick, although Frederick is probably going to be not that much to re-sign him, but it could be because he's on pace for 20 goals. So that, that would definitely increase how much he's he's looking at. While, yes, they have a lot of contracts that are expiring, this is where trade rumors kind of drive me a little bit crazy, where I'm saying, yeah, you can afford to sign Pasternak and Horvat if you're not going to bring anybody else back. And then you get into the argument of, okay, so who fills those roles? One problem that Boston's got is that they have traded a lot of first-rounders, they've traded prospects, they've traded young players... With the win now mentality, they don't really have a lot of blue chip prospects coming up who can jump into spots for the Boston Bruins if they go that direction. So that's why I really don't get into the trade speculation side of it because I am sure there are a number of teams that you could just plug Horvat into. We could look at their expiring contract situation. I'm going to use Boston just because that's the one I was reading. But I'm, I'm sure that when you look at expiring contracts, because that's the thing. People will always say, well, it's not a problem. This team has $25 million for, for uh, free agents. They could just sign these guys for 8 or $9 million each, and they're fine. And you completely ignore that they have to fill out the rest of the roster. So that's, that's something that I've, I've seen when it comes to rumors. That's why I don't really get into all the speculation. But it, it, is, it is fun to look at. It's, it's kind of fun to discuss. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I, I think for Horvat, I think the most natural spot for him as a rental is this team right here. And I think the farther off the map Colorado gets when it comes to making the playoffs, I, I think it makes them more likely to circle back with Horvat and, and see if there's a fit there. Uh, if, in fact, there's been any discussions that take place. But we'll see, right? We'll see what ends up happening. Let me know your thoughts. In fact, let me know where you think Corvette's going to end up going. Or do you think he's going to end up staying in Vancouver? I would love to see him stay in Vancouver. I just don't know financially how they make that work. But let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.